is how quick we can get a camel, you know, that's a feral camel in Australia at least, or even unhandled camel, get it let, hold to lead and sit in in three days and then uh, possibly a saddle on in five, you oh, know, depending wild. on the personality. Whether you're a camel owner, wannabe camel owner, or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful, and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels, how to care for, train, and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. Now, some of these podcasts are an audio take of our video, so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and, of course, lots of camels. This is your one and only go-to podcast, all about camels. Welcome back to the Camel Connection podcast. Hi, everyone. It's Tara here. And Russell here. Thanks so much for being here again. I've checked the stats recently, and there's been thousands of downloads of our podcast, which cool. I think it's been going about a year now. So if you're one of those you know, consistent listeners, thank you so much Absolutely. for sticking with us. Because, I mean, you know, obviously, I think the reason you're sticking with us is we try to give you as much value value as we possibly can um and we love having you here i mean this is why we do it. i mean if there were zero downloads i don't think we would continue doing no, it there wouldn't be a point would there so this is really 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 great yeah it is because of you listening and uh you know giving us the cues uh the questions uh as well uh yeah that's, that's been really popular too the yeah, camel questions. yeah yeah but it's a, it's that we realize that you know there is a need um, and hopefully, you know, we give you some ideas. Um, we certainly, you know, we're on a learning curve. Everyone's on a learning curve. But uh, we certainly hope that uh, what we do in part, um, you know, is of value. Yeah, well, I hope to be learning well, for the rest of my life. Well, there you go. But, I mean, you just never know how far these things go with podcasts. No. I mean, I actually have a really nice story that um, a client of ours actually reached out to us recently. And um, she... She said that, you know, a few things are changing in her life and she specifically told me and I asked her permission if I could share this. So it's with permission. She said it's because of the podcast episode that you did. Um, It was I think it was the one titled How to Make Any Camel Dream or Goal Come True. She said it was because of that podcast that I decided to um, get another job. I'll get a couple of jobs so she can start saving so she can buy her own property to help her camel dream come true. That's cool. So... Uh, That's, you know, uh, you know, um, kudos, absolute kudos to her. Oh, I said that to her. I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. um, but She's probably listening. You know who you are. (laughs) Yeah, that's cool. And, um, you know, sometimes that's what it takes to achieve a dream. I mean, Mm. it doesn't matter what the dream is. You know, I mean, uh, I've got a dream as well, which actually has nothing to do with camels. It's uh, to have to do, oh, I'd like a yacht. Well, there it is. It's out there in cyberspace now. I've I've blurted it out to friends and family, but here it is in cyberspace. I want a yacht. And uh, and I've actually got to either do extra or be smarter about what I do um, to be able to get the money together for a yacht and also the training. You know what it is, actually? It's about... um and I know this because I'm doing a course uh, over the next three months that's all about, you know, how, how to, you know, have the life you want, really. I mean, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today because we've got a camel topic. But, I mean, this is related to camels. It's about who do you – what shoes do you have to step in in order to get where you want to go? So – you know, and that can look different for a variety of people. Some go, well, I'll get another job so we could, because you know, maybe I only had one part part time job and now I want two. Uh. Um, or do I have to 
start thinking differently rather than I can never afford it. Hang on a sec. Maybe I can afford this. And yeah, just going through that process. Uh, it, it is deep and, and, and good stuff. I love it personally. And, and getting back to the camel side of things, when I first started, okay, um, I, I had all these great ideas, etc. you know, that I wanted to track across Australia, which incidentally, in case if you don't know my history, it's uh, something that I've managed to achieve. Um, but I actually realised that I was the one that had to make the changes. Absolutely. And, uh, and that meant, for me, that actually meant instead of trying to get camels coming to me in my life. Good luck with that. <laughs> I had to go to the camels. Absolutely. And that was a big shift. And this is a perfect example of action, which you went out into the desert and you know, started learning about camels, caused a reaction, mm. which is the chain reaction of the events that followed. So, you know, never give up on that dream that you have, um, camel related and obviously anything else related. Just do that first action step. You know, sometimes it can be really hard and really hard because you have to get out of the habit of not doing that. That's right. You have to change your whole persona. Like, okay, who do I have to be? Not that you have to change your whole, you know, who you are at the soul level, but, you know. Who do I have to be in order to achieve this goal? That's and you're right. like, well, I need to go out to the desert. I, I need to be out there. I need to, you know. And it's the same with camel training. And I think we'll cover that a lot over the next yeah. few months, especially as I learn more about this because I, I love, you know, th- there's so much that we can do more of. And in particular, I'm talking about camel training. If we just allow ourselves to be more of that personality that needs to come out or that skill that needs to come out or that action that needs to be taken true yeah look i I do remember actually preparing all those years uh, if you in case if you don't know i've written a book which might be of help to someone in one day um i hope it is uh, a lot of people found that helpful camel man dreaming um and it's about 13 years plus also uh, of training um of of uh getting from being a lecturer to actually starting my walk uh, the two-year journey um, across Australia down to Melbourne uh, for a charity and uh, but I, I, I remember actually sitting in Alice Springs in a flat and uh, typing um, to organizations and people and you know trying to get things together and I, every time I managed to do something, I always thought there's a little hurdle that I've achieved and, uh, and more little hurdles that I put behind me, the closer I'm going to get to actually achieving the goal. And even when walking the six and a half thousand kilometers, um, there were days when it was rotten hot. I mean, I'm talking, you know, in the 48 degrees, 49 degrees centigrade. And uh, and you're out in the middle of nowhere, and and there's sort of like there was for that day. There's no relief from the heat, and sometimes from the monotony too. Um, but every step that I used to take, I'd say, well, there's another little hurdle. I don't have to achieve that one anymore. It's mm. gone. It's finished. I've achieved that, and I'm one step, one meter closer to the goal. And, uh, and that's what it takes. And that sort of does lead into, in a fashion, into our topic today, which is camel training. How long does it take? Yeah, how long does it take? How long you know, does that's it probably take? one of the, I mean, I always say it's the most popular question we get with all the questions we get because they're all very, I mean, it, you know, it's, a, it's amazing how so many people have a similar question. Yes. Um, but when somebody's first wanting to start out with camels and maybe they have an idea to walk across Australia or, you know, some other continent and they're like, well, how long does it, how long is this all going to take? Yeah. You know, and... and it, how long's a piece of string? Yeah, it's like, well, what's your situation? And then we go through a whole process that way. Um, it's different for everyone. <clears throat> Absolutely, and mm-hmm. it depends what you want to achieve as well. Yep. Yeah. So should we go into the achievement side? Like, how do you want to well, break this up? Yeah, I mean, I, when I was, when I was um, uh, getting some trees ready to plant, as I was thinking about this topic, and uh, sometimes I do my best thinking outdoors, doing stuff like that. Oh, me too. Um, but I was thinking, well, where do we go with this topic? Because it's so open-ended. And as far as 
I, I just sort of came to the conclusion as far as the dream or the goal uh, takes, um, it depends on what that goal is. You can set dates and all that sort of stuff. But really it does depend on, and I've heard this expression elsewhere, um, it depends on how many, how much time and how many miles you do. Uh, and the decisions that you make along the way. Mm. You know, that you can uh, go a certain pathway and make a decision that could totally turn you in a total different direction for a little while. So let's break that down, the time and miles thing, or time and kilometres, or whatever, time and time, Distance. time and time. <laughs> um, is it, okay, so somebody has to obviously put aside time, commitment time to handle and train their camel. Yeah. Um, and then... It's the reinforcement that count, which is the mile, so to speak, that counts on those things. And we've speak, spoken about that before in, in a couple of other um, podcasts we've done on how to put those so-called miles into your training, um, which involves, yeah, basically reinforcement, going for walks and, you know, just whatever partic- your particular goal is. Um, but from there, I think... I mean, do you want to add anything to time and miles? I mean, it th- like this is a really open-ended subject, so we're trying to sort of navigate this topic yeah. to to suit. Well, I'd, I'd say there's three main core areas. You've got people who want to <laughs> want to go like do an expedition or trek. People who want to um, ride, maybe so. ride their camel. Oh, there's probably more than that. <laughs> people who want to ride personally their camel. The commercial operators. Yeah. Um, and you know, pet camels. Okay, so I think really it really depends on you've got to look at your situation and circumstances. So say for example, okay, you uh, you work, um, you're a computer operator or something like that, you know, in an office building, okay, in the city, and your camel is on a property outside the city, and how often can you get to your camel and all that sort of thing. So that, you know, there's a time constraint. Mm. Um, now. Let's say, for example, okay, let's get something concrete here. You're wanting to set up a small beach riding operation with, say, five camels. And I'm thinking of one of our clients in particular. Okay. Now, he he does have a, a job, a full-time job, um, f- to my knowledge. and uh, But uh, the camels live on, on site. With him, yeah. With him, yeah. Okay. So... Uh, Obviously, during the day, he's at work, um, but then when he comes home, he's able to spend an hour or two with his camel, or the camels. Now, that hour or two, even though it may seem not much is achieved, you'd be surprised how much that adds up. Mm. Okay, so he's able to do what he can. Now, if he was dead set serious that next summer, he was going to have the beach ride operation going ahead. He'd have to have a look at his finances, how he'd be able to manage uh, living for maybe, you know, five months, six months or something like that, where he could concentrate 100% of his time on training camels, Mm. uh, ready for that riding operation. Uh, Plus also making saddles and, you know, advertising and, you know, all the other bits and pieces that are that being said that business. could be done over like a three two or three year period as well it just That's depends right. on like everyone has different ideas about how they spend their time so That's right. um, i think it depends on urgency mm. the amount of urgency and the that commitment you might have and the commitment that you're prepared to make mm. uh, so that being in the long term um you have to look at you know what is your commitment level um, you know how much time and energy you wish to spend. Um, what sort of resources do you have to be able to sustain yourself during the the time while you're doing this? Um, and um, do you have the stickability uh, at the end of the day? Okay, uh, is this just a flash in the pan idea? So going back to the, we'll stay on track a little bit. Or not <laughs> with uh, the camel training side of things. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, If we're talking commercial here, I mean, you know, there's lots of different opinions out there, obviously. I mean, we've all got different opinions. Uh Um, But, uh, you know, our viewpoint on commercial camel operations is quite, and our standards are quite high, um, in a sense that we don't just, 
um, encourage people just to get a bunch of camels, you know, train them in three months and then chuck them on the beach sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. We, we, have, we have different standards. I shouldn't say high standards, different standards. Um, for instance, with us here, that we only put our most experienced and our el- eldest, oldest camels in the operation and we wholeheartedly know that we can communicate with them and that they will follow instructions and that we can have an actual relationship happening. And, and I know that uh, there's a lot of uh, very responsible operators out there who are doing exactly that. Yeah. Too, which is really good to see, you yeah. know. Um, and, uh, so it really is dependent on how much you're committed to those camels, to yeah. that camel. Are you willing to, you know, pull down the veil, the ego veil, if there is one, or are you willing to, you know, really put yourself and, and learn the camel psychology in order to... Because that is really what creates a successful operation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, like... you. I mean, if you're doing the commercial thing, you know, you want to make sure that your camels are as rock solid as what you possibly can make them. I mean, nothing's ever guaranteed. You're dealing with animals, of course, but you want to ensure that, you know, for your own protection and also the protection of the animal and its reputation as well. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so I hope that sort of uh, helps with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's in a commercial sense. Yeah. So, so should... let's, let's just talk just generally about um, actually training. Um, and I've sort of touched on it already. And uh, in, in the short term, how long, how long does it take to train a camel? Okay, so we can get the feral camel from the bush and have it hold to lead within three days, three to five days, for, for, you know, average. Mm. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, to actually have a saddle on, you know, we're looking, you know, in between the five and, you know, say 10 days um, mm. quite comfortably and know that that camel is... But that's a really concentrated effort. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. And if you don't have that sort of time, then you have to understand, I suppose, or we as cameleers have to understand that... You know, if you take out uh, a concentrated day and you divide it by 10, well, there's 10 days. Mm. Uh, so you only got, you know, so like, like an hour. If you're going to work for 10 hours on a concentrated day, you've only got an hour. And this is the, the beauty with cam- Well, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Is that it's, it's, they don't go green like horses do. <laughs> no. That's such a funny saying. But they don't, they don't uh, forget their training. They may challenge it at times, but they certainly do not forget it. Yeah. And in actual fact, staggering it over a period of time is actually a lot more beneficial because camels are very much a thinker. Mm. Mm. And they think about what's happening. So so long as... Whatever it is that you've done in your training session, that you finish on a success, mm. all right, a, a, a desired outcome, all right, and it doesn't matter if it's an hour or half an hour, whatever it is, but as long as you've finished on a desired outcome, a success, and you have lots of praise to the camel, of course, um, good boy, good girl, whatever it is, and... And that, that is so much more valuable than keep pressing on and on and on and on. Mm. You, know, try, you know, and if you do things little, little chunks like that, the camel has that opportunity to think. That's what they, yeah, they really like that think time. Yeah. It, 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 it's like they training themselves, <laughs> really. Yeah. You know, in between not handling them and handling them, in between that, they're, they're doing their own training in their head. Yeah. Uh, camels are... Are so receptive with with that. If you are doing it from a connection based based approach and a trust based approach, um, they're so receptive of it. That's right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And it's quick. The progress is quick. The I mean, progress we is discussed quick. that I think a couple of podcasts back is how quick we can get a camel. You know, that's a feral camel in Australia at least, or even unhandled camel. Um, and you know get it you know let hold to lead and sitting in three days and then uh possibly a saddle on in five you oh, know depending right. on the personality that's right i'm mm. thinking particularly of that camel up in one of the broom operations that we went to recently mm. um that you know it was sort of like two days into the training nothing was moving nothing was happening mm. and uh, you remember the camel oh, i can't remember its name now Oh, well, they all did really well, so I don't yeah, know who yeah, you're talking no, about. There was one, one in particular, and they, just nothing was moving. Uh, everyone was starting to write this camel off. Mm. And 
then came on to the third day. And it all clicked in place. The camel, must have overnight, had a, 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 a light bulb come on. Mm. And it was all different. Yeah. Very different overnight. Which goes to just prove how important that thinking time is yeah. as well. Yeah, it really um, is. And, what, and I guess in between the time you handle them and the time that you don't, you want to make sure that they're thinking thoughts you want them to think. You know, yeah. not like, oh, they, that was a terrible experience. I don't. I, That's yeah. why we end on a success. Yes. All right, you end on a desired outcome. Mm. All right, that's gentle, kind, nice, and all that sort of thing. But it is positive towards your true end goal. Mm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, in the long term, um, how long does it take? Well, again, how long's a piece of string? Mm, mm. Uh, but remember this. Uh, this is The training process, like the initial training, really doesn't take that long. No. I mean, you know, we can take people through five days of training, um, with an with a you know an untamed camel, and at the end of the day, you, there's a receptive camel, and the per, the person's receptive too. It has to be two way street, um, but it's then okay. Where do you want to go from here? Do you well, want to do the commercial thing? Do you want to trek with the camels? That means training them into a you know into a caravan or a string, and you know practicing that, or training training them to to you know put packs on and all that sort of stuff. Like there's lots of variables um, or training them to ride again that's that's another thing as well but it, i mean all in all i mean the really simple answer is cam training camels doesn't take that long really no, that's it, right. it over a period of time it takes a lot of consistency but the initial training which they never ever forget and um, the foundation, the stuff. foundational training. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't take that long. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, we do it in five days. You know, one level one and two. So yeah, camels always learning. Hmm. Uh, that's the important part to remember. Okay. But actually. <coughs> oh, sorry, we've got a few. We've got a bit of a cold around the place. Um, Can't here with coughing on the job. Actually, that that point really. <coughs> sorry, just had a drink. Oh, another drink of water. <laughs> drink your water. Good. So that point you just made about um, ca camels are always learning. Just before we started this podcast, we, we have the camels out in a paddock that they're not usually they're not usually in. It's actually <clears throat> the surrounding grounds of our training yards. And um, one camel, um, she got her. We, we had a pile of junk there, which was piled up, and she shouldn't have walked in it, but she just lost her head a bit. Um, and she got her foot caught in, in a piece of wire. The wire wasn't attached to anything and, you know, it was no problem. And I could have ran in and saved her, but it wasn't urgent, like, you know, it was no problem. Um, and I thought, no, I know camels and I know that they'll figure it out. Um, but she was just more interested in if I was going to open the gate for her or not. So if I did, she would have ran off with it. Um, but then I'm like, no, I'm just going to step back here. And um, she figured it out because they always do. And you could see her moving her feet. To, it wasn't a, a tangled or anything. She just put her foot in it. And she she took her foot out. And I, that example that you just said then, that camels are always learning, yet yeah, they are. And even in their own natural environments, if they get caught in something or if they – I'm looking at <laughs> Banker at the moment. She's trying to get to the greener grass on the other side of the fence. She's learning to put her head under – the electric tape to the point where she won't get electrocuted, but she can get the grass. Yeah. So they are avid learners. Avid learners. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I think also uh, one thing that actually helped, how long does it take? Hey, let's get back to the uh, topic here. Uh, how long does it take? Well, obviously it's going to be a lot quicker when they're on the job. Uh, when they're actually working. If you're, if you're wanting to do a tracking operation, for example, or a riding operation, uh, they're going to learn very quickly on the job. However, remember this, that if you put a, a, a freshly trained camel, uh, uh, and it all depends on its personalities, there's so many factors involved here, so I can't say anything too concrete, um, but if it's a, you know, like a freshly trained camel, you know, it might be of age, etc., um, and you've put it onto the job of this riding operation, remember that it doesn't have necessarily have the experience or the maturity of maturity. that experience uh, <clears throat> to be successful in that at that moment. It will learn, definitely, 
but you're also putting uh, yourself and therefore the camel at risk. That's another really good point. And if you haven't listened to the podcast episode yet, um, Camel Ages and What to Expect, go back to that because um, that is a really important that actually has a lot to do with how long this process process can yeah. take. Um, so it's only a couple of episodes back, so you can you can um, listen to that there or watch it there. It, it's really camel age has a lot to do with the training and how much they're taking in and how much they're they're going to challenge you or not challenge you and all that sort of stuff. So if you're considering of maybe doing a commercial operation or even uh, you're an expedition, definitely go back and listen to that particular yeah. episode. I mean, they're all great. We, we offer a lot of value in all the episodes, but, um, yeah, that one that one was helpful towards training. For sure. <clears throat> the last point that I've actually written down here is incidental. Right. Okay. Just, you know, you might not necessarily uh, set yourself a goal for a training session or anything. It might be just in the yard or, mm. you know, doing something, right? And, uh, and you, you know, just incidentally, you, you need to have a look at something, you know. I don't mm. know, it might be something on top of the camel's hump and you can't quite see it, so you ask the camel to push down. Mm. Okay? Is it just incidental like that? And, uh, and that, and the camel goes ahead and pushes down. I mean, it might take some time, it all depends. And but if you've got the step by step, you know, sort of program in place, then you can use that uh, if you have to. Mm. All right, after you know, having primarily trained the camel, and if the camel is uh, not doing what, what it is that it's being asked of, uh, then you've got that step by step process. Of which case, the camel will remember that, okay. And uh, and so, you know, you've got the tools in the toolkit, if you like, to go ahead and have an incidental training session. Mm, mm. Uh, well, that happened before. Um, that story I told you about that camel getting caught in the, in the wire, it's like back up. You know, I did actually tell at one point to back up and she listened because she knew she was trying to get out of it. Yeah. Um, all of that counts. Like, well, that's it. And there's, you know, back up. And if you're wanting to do a wagon, you're going to have to have your camels back, backing up mm. at different points. Okay. That's, that's just, so, you know, think like that. What are the skills that the camel's going to need for the purpose that you're needing, uh, and, that you're doing? And you're always communicating with them one way. Like it may not be verbally or in instructions, but... Camels can pick up on your thoughts. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, like they can read your mind, and if you and, and if you really tune in too, you can actually read their mind, which is called yeah, you know, absolutely camel whispering. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> basically, yeah. Um, you know, which is basically an intuitive a hunch. You know, sort of you know having a hunch on on what that camel's thinking. That's so they they always know where you're at. Yeah, you cannot hide that. Yeah, you know. So if you walk into a training yard. Um, thinking that you're going to accomplish with a young camel, for instance, that's barely trained, and you're going to accomplish this, you know, this sit thing in like five minutes. You know, the camel could have a completely different idea because they don't work on time. They don't. They don't do time constraints. Right. Um, and often, when you go in with that sort of attitude, it ends up taking two hours. Right, so. That's right. And you so, know, if it does take two hours, you've got to also look at well, okay, where's the camel at? What time of the day is it? Has it had a feed? You know, is it thirsty? Mm. You know, there's factors that are involved. It might sound overwhelming, but believe me, I mean, you know, we all start from the same point mm. uh, of not knowing anything. We're all born upside down and naked. And even if you're uh, born into a, a, a generational family of uh, camels, so you're actually still born upside down and naked. Mm. Um, and, you know, you're learning as you're growing, obviously, and that's the same as anyone at any point that enters into the camel world, you are starting to grow from that moment on. Yep. Absolutely. Does that make sense? It does to me because, I mean, like we all have different experiences in life. Like even though, even if somebody's born into it, so to speak, yeah. their experiences is going to be different to everybody else's, you know, yeah. similar but maybe different, you know, and that's, that's, right. that's really... And, and someone that's not born into it, um, like you know, us. They, might, they might have had other experiences in life which has actually helped them. Yes further becoming a better camel handler yes. um, than, than, you know, than not having those experiences. I think so. that's other, also a really good point, thinking about camel training, how long it takes, is always be um, open to learning and, and the sponge because often, 
our biggest ahas in camel training or maybe we're, we're tweaking the method a little bit it's always the same but maybe we tweak it for a different camel usually comes from outside learning yeah. like maybe i read a book and you know it, it was a book about relationships or you know a woman walking through the wilderness or and you bring those lessons into it or you know maybe you had a deeper meaningful conversation with your partner or some or a co-worker and like if you really open open your mind um to to this camel and communicating with them then you, you, every life experience will almost go oh that's that's just like training camels or that's you know that's just like being with camels I mean, exactly yeah yeah it happens don't, a lot don't forget too that you know your thoughts are just as important as reading a book on camel training mm. you know if you've got an idea you've got an idea um then uh Perhaps it might be a good one, mm. and you know that might you might want to try it out, see how it goes. Of course, you use your safety parameters, mm. um, but uh, then you know if your idea, for example, is absolutely fantastic and you know it's worked well, you know therefore it's worthwhile sharing. Mm. Okay, and you know uh, how did we come about all this? What? Well, how did we come about all this training that we, you know, we're involved with now? It's because a series of a ideas, series of ideas mm. you know, that have come from, you know, centuries, really. Mm. Um, mm. You know, it's come over And centuries. personal experiences and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Everyone's, I mean, that's something big I've noticed in our in-person courses and even our virtual camel school as well, is that everybody's experience of camel training, like just think about in-person ones, like, not one person had the same experience. Yeah. You know, they're all individual. And that's that's, right. that's a really important thing to remember. So, And that also rules out perfection. You yeah. know, like, oh, I'm not doing it like Tara Russell. I'm not doing it like, you know, my friend down the road who also has a camel sort of thing. Yeah. So long as you have your foundational training, you know, which we hope by now you've at least considered the Camel Connection Trust-based camel training because we 100% believe in that foundational training and yeah. we'll preach it until the day we die. Yeah. Um, you know, so long as you've got that foundational stuff, you can build on your own experience from there and it'll, it will be different to everybody else's and that's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, well, I've got nothing else to say on this topic. I mean, uh, at the <laughs> moment anyway, to be able to fit into the hour... I uh, could probably talk forever. Oh, we can always but, talk uh, forever about camels. Yeah, but uh, anyway, listen, guys, uh, you know, uh, how long does it take? Well, what's your situation? Mm, mm. Yeah, what's your situation? What's your, what's your goals? Um, and uh, what are you prepared to do? Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day. And don't forget that if you do have a specific question um, related to camels, then you can actually ask a camel question and we'll answer it here on the podcast yeah. um well we'll aim to answer it um we get a lot of questions that are similar so we just do that topic so to speak so all you have to do is head over to our website camelconnection.com and find the ask a camel question box and click it and submit your question totally. um this yeah this is great yeah. go ahead and do some Leave more camel comment. connecting you know if you've got some comments on today's topic by all means uh, drop down a comic a comment comment a comic <laughs> a comment because i said connection and not yet. yeah um uh, and um yeah don't forget if you found this valuable not, don't forget to share it too yeah and um and rate it yeah we like um we like the feedback absolutely yeah absolutely keeps us keeps us going and it, it kind of we feed off the energy that you guys give us so keep the emails rolling and the the reviews rolling that just makes us turn up every single week that's it okay thanks so much for tuning in guys and we'll catch you on the next one all right thanks guys we'll see you then bye bye if you like this information we've just shared with you, you'll be sure to love the free camel ebooks and training videos that we're giving away. We're giving away two camel ebooks, Introduction to Camels and Introduction to Camel Training. Plus, in our bonus camel training videos, we take you through training and handling camels built on connection and trust. And we also share how to understand a camel's way of thinking. This is gold information that you don't want to miss. So be sure to sign up now to get your free ebooks and training videos over at camelconnection.com.